happy friday eve welcome back to another video this video is going to be a little bit more chatty so i'm sitting down in my kitchen right now i wrote everything down that we're going to cover in this video and i'm very excited to do my first recap of all the things that i baked in the month of march so i'm going to list up five recipes that you have to try from last month's baking videos and then five that you could definitely tweak with some comments or notes that I had from when I baked it and make it another five star. So starting off strong with the discard breadsticks. You saw my last video, I never do this, but I hopped on camera mid chew, mid bite, and I was like, you need to try this. And I still feel that way. My husband and I were able to eat them like two to three days later and they still tasted like they came out of the oven. We put them in the microwave and it was fine. I kid you not, that was probably the best thing I've made, and I've made a lot of things as of late. I've been very busy, <laughs> but those breadsticks were number one in my opinion, and my husband's. He ate three a day, I think, three to four a day, so definitely a staple now in our household. Um, coming in number two was the discard pretzels. The first regular salted pretzels that I made were amazing, and I think I ate... I don't remember how many I made. I think I made like a total of 10 and I think I ate like five out of six of the regular ones. I didn't eat any past a bite of the cinnamon ones because I had applied the cinnamon sugar incorrectly. But knowing now from that com that person's comment, I know exactly how to fix that. And then I'll be coming for Annie Ann's. No, I won't, I'm just kidding. Um, but those are really good. The, the overall bake wasn't difficult. There wasn't a lot of steps to it. The main thing would be proving time. And I would say the same for the breadsticks. You needed like 12 to 13 hours just for it to rise on its own, which is totally fine. But keeping that in mind whenever you're making these definitely accrued two days of baking time for any of these. So you're not running down to the wire and you don't have something available when you are hosting or having it for dinner. Or a snack number three the graham crackers i did not expect to, to like them as much as i did i told you i had some regular graham crackers that i was using and it was it wasn't upsetting my stomach but i just know i could eat something better and that was my main reason for looking at this recipe at all and it did not disappoint it was super easy to follow i think bake time was like total of like three hours with resting or proving time and that's not bad at all. Like I said, there are recipes that take multiple days. So the fact that I was able to bake it all on the same day and eat it for dessert, so good. Bonnie wants to say hello. She's coming into shot now, I think. Or at least you can hear little footsteps. Um, coming in number four, English muffins. The first set that I made, I used the wrong cornmeal. And that is the only complaint I have for that, which is why it's on number three out of five versus one or two. The second I changed the cornmeal, the game changed. I was able to freeze them, so I ate them. I think it made a total of 10 or 12, so I was able to eat them every day for breakfast for almost two weeks. And I'm a big meal prep girly, like I just don't have the patience to cook something every single day for 30 minutes every single meal. It's just too tedious for me. So breakfast is like my main bulk meal that I'll make just because I'm, in the, I'm not a morning person. I'm just not, I wish I was. Me in the morning, not like this. We're more like this, you know? So breakfast meal prep is essential to me and the success of my day. If I have to wake up and make a breakfast, I'm not having a good day. All in this to say, having meal prepped English muffin sandwiches for breakfast every morning, changed the game, truly and honestly. And it was totally fine. I will say it was totally fine with the incorrect corn milk. There was no issues whatsoever. It's just when you have an idea in your mind of what something's gonna taste like and it doesn't, it's kind of that moment of, ooh, but then it's fine, you know? Coming in number five, the final one, is the cinnamon rolls. Okay, so the cinnamon rolls are Stephanie's recipe and I told you that I had made them a previous time to that video that I originally showed you all and they didn't come out. I've tried to film this one section three times now <laughs> and this is this is the result <laughs> do you want to say something do you want to say how your dog treats work 
She's telling me. So as I was saying, the cinnamon rolls are from Stephanie's recipe and I think they are the most thought out instructions along with pictures and there's a video. So I found the recipe really well thought out and executed and I highly recommend it. If you haven't made it yet, I would recommend that you make them. The first time I made it, I pulled a typical meat. I didn't have any of the ingredients or like I had 75% of the ingredients. And if you can imagine, it didn't turn out good. So the first time was on me. It was not good for that reason. Um, the second time I was doing steps that I had missed the first time around. There was I think a total of like three or four steps that I just glazed over for some reason. I don't know what was happening in previous Gabby's hit brain, couldn't tell you, but I skipped those. So that was the first time I was doing that section. And because of it, I wasn't able to like sit back and think about what I was reading. I was just going through, okay, step one, step two, step three, you know? And looking back, once I started doing the editing, you could hear it on the voiceover. I was like, oh my gosh that's puff pastry. What, like, how could I read that and not comprehend that or do it and not comprehend it? But all of that's to say, I put this as number five, not because of the instruction, not because of the recipe, not how it tasted, for the sheer fact that had I known from the two times that I made it that I was making puff pastry, I would have handled the dough differently. And by that, I mean, I would have put it in the fridge. I would have made sure that the butter remained cold. I let the butter warm up because I didn't think anything of it. I, I was just following the steps that were in place. And this is where a good kind of like basic knowledge of baking comes in handy, especially when you're doing these random recipes that you find online, like, like in my Easter video from last week. Knowing that adding the eggs to warm or hot milk was gonna curdle it and not create the end result that I wanted was essential when I was following that specific recipe that said add those things in succession of each other without telling you that you're gonna get curdled eggs. Do you know what I mean? So having that like base knowledge of, oh, this plus this equals this typically is helpful in scenarios like this where you're just following step by step and it's not laid out that this could be a possible result as to following the recipes because I I learned in baking, baking is very much to the T in a sense. I mean, you've seen me make artisan bread. You've seen me make starters. I don't go as intense as like scale grams. This is how much flour that needs to be added. This is how much water. That's just not my style. I like the feel of things. But when you're trying to follow a recipe, using measurements are important. When you're going through the recipe step by step by step, it's important that you're following it the way that it's laid out because that's how the creator intended you to follow the recipe. Obviously, duh. But that's where the base knowledge comes in. And had I known I was making a puff pastry, if it was outlined, you know, this section or common FAQs or things like that, then I would have been like, oh, I need to keep this cold. This dough cannot be warm. I can't let it sit on the counter while I'm listening to Lanny. Like I just need to focus, keep it cool, take it in and out. In each turn and rolling out with the rolling pin, I need to put it back in the fridge, let it get cool again. Because I didn't do that and I let the butter melt, the, the layers weren't as good. It didn't bake as well as it should have there was still bits of butter in there. And like I told you, it gave me that like bitter, sour taste where it's like pulling from your teeth. So that's why this is number five. Not because of taste, not because of recipe, not because of instructions or lack of video or video quality. It has nothing to do with that. I do not put any of this on Stephanie. It's just a moment of having that base knowledge when you're reading a recipe that I need to still grow and understand more as I'm going to do more recipes that there's things like this that I need to have a base knowledge of so I can recognize that in a recipe and apply that knowledge to it. So that is why it's number five. I highly recommend that you try this out and then just keep that in mind when you're doing that one section where you're rolling and folding and rolling and fold like in between pop it in the fridge let it cool down don't let the butter get stuck to the counter if i did it again and followed the correct rules i think it would be a top two for me personally now let's get into the five 
worst things that I bake. And worst being such a like, like an umbrella term, because for me to say worst, that means like, I have to hold myself to such a high standard that it was below a standard that I have. And that's not true at all. It's just, there was some things I learned along the way. These are some of my earlier bakes. Obviously I'm gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna mess up. I've told you guys in every video, in no way am I saying I'm perfect at this or good. <laughs> I'm just trying. And sometimes you fail and that's okay. So these are not my worst bakes, but they're things, they're bakes that didn't reach the highest potential because of something that happened within the process of my bakes. And that could be a personal thing, it could be recipe related, it could just be the ingredients that I used versus the ones that were suggested. It could be anything, honestly. No fault to them, it's just something that happened when I was baking it. So these aren't my five worst. Like I said, you can totally take these with my comments and then go make a five star bake. This is not a bash on anything that was made or used from a recipe. This is just something I learned while I was baking these things. So number one, <laughs> surprise, is hot cross buns. We saw them, we looked at them, we all took a moment of silence for them and they have been put down to rest. <laughs> They were a short hit in my household. My father ate one and I don't think he ever ate another one after it. And I listened, I gave him the heads up. I said, hey, this is not the best thing I've ever made in my life. Take that with a grain of salt. And he said he wanted it anyway, so I gave it to him. But icing, looking at traditional hot cross buns, there's no icing. That's just the American's version of it and I wanted the traditional version. It was one of those things I didn't research well enough and that is totally on me. So I am not faulting the recipe, I'm faulting my lack of knowledge on the recipe itself. If you were to make this recipe, I would recommend number one, look for a recipe that has the crosses within the bun. I'll put a picture here, what you should look for. Um, and then number two, if you were to use the recipe that I listed in the previous video, Make sure you're adding the butter first, that it's room temperature almost to the point of melting into the bowl first, and then you're gonna add the milk that's hot, warmish, and stir that together to make the liquid first, and then add the sugar, and then add the eggs. In the recipe, it said like eggs, milk mixed together with sugar, you know, it was all like kind of bunched together, but it's important to note that you put those in, in those steps because otherwise you'll get curdled milk. And that's not what anyone wants because then your entire bake is gonna be not good. <laughs> so word of advice, do that. Okay, number two is banana muffins. I knew I was going out on a ledge here that could ostracize me from everyone by saying that I prefer ripe bananas and by ripe I mean green and I listen I, I came out swinging I knew I knew I knew I knew I was gonna be the only one who thought that but I just I just hoped in my <laughs> I just had a small glimmer of hope that someone else also felt the same way but no one did and that's okay like I said in the comments the reason recipes call for ripe bananas being mushy bananas is because they have more flavor. You can smell them from a mile away. You know, if they were sitting on that kitchen counter back there, I'd be able to smell them if they were ripe. If they were mushy, then you, I would be able to smell them. And that's the whole point of using banana in a recipe. I just don't like the texture, the mushiness. I knew saying and using my version of a ripe banana was not gonna work and I did it anyway. I wanted to try out the recipe. I had it saved for a long time and I just was too impatient to wait for it to become the real version of ripe and that one's on me. But when you ate them, there was still that bitter taste and I think this was before I got the new salt or the new butter that I started using and I think that's where we might have gone wrong. It's, it like had that teeth pulling in bits and it was only in the bottom half. So I'm not quite sure what that could have been. I don't know if there was a, a dense thing that was used within the recipe that made it, it condense at the bottom to make a concentrated version of that, of the bitterness or chunks of bitterness. But yeah, that's what I found. They were really good up top. The tops of the muffins, they rose 
perfectly. Like they looked so good in the tins. And when I took them out, they looked really, really good. The tops were super pillowy and tall and they looked like little clouds and they tasted like clouds. It's just when you got to the bottom, it was where that like bitter pulling chunks were found and I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, I'm gonna chalk it up to my non-ripe bananas, number one. If you do make this recipe, use the correct ripe version of bananas. I liked the flavor that the bananas that I had made, but if you're used to the typical ripe bananas, I would say stick with that. And then, like I had said, I think my salt was the issue that I was having. So just use thin flaky salt, change your salt, ripen your bananas more. And then it's really, 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 really good. The top part was so good. I was like, oh man, I wish the whole thing was like this. So that's why it's number two. It's higher in the sense that you can fix it. Now we start getting into three, four, five, which are things that I think you definitely could fix and make a five star bake, but I'm still trying to figure out where I went wrong and how to make it a little bit better. So number three, dog treats. I never tasted them because I'm not a dog. I gave them two different dogs. Both of them ate them very slowly and like I was forcing them to. They weren't like, ooh, bacon bits, you know? They weren't that excited when I was giving them to them and they don't last longer than a week. I thought, you know, with the amount that you were given or the amount that you could make from that batch, you'd be able to keep them a little bit longer term. And that wasn't the case when I came home. Bonnie's had white, green, fuzzy mold on them. So I chucked them immediately. So they don't last long, number one. Number two, I don't think it was something that a dog was super keen to eat. I don't know if it was the pumpkin puree that I used. I don't know if it was the sourdough starter. It was too sour for them. I think there's definitely something you could add just to make it a little bit better. If you have like a tried and true dog treat recipe, put it in the comments, let me know, or link it in the comments so I can try it and then get back to you and let you all know if it was more of a hit than the one that I linked. But again, nothing against the recipe, just not something that either dog was super, super stoked about. I wish this wasn't on my list, but number four is bagels. The New York style, the big bagels that I made. I just can't get the science down. I don't know what it is, but every time I get to the bath to give them a little bit of a pre-cook before you put them in the oven, they sink like a rock. They are so dense and when they come out, they're so dense. I mean, sometimes, don't get me wrong, I do love a good dense bagel, but I want more of that airy feel to it, especially if I'm having it before a workout. I don't want to have like this rock in my stomach, you know? I was super hopeful with the bagels. I had used, I didn't tell you this, but I used a different recipe prior to that video where I made mini bagels. And I mean, they were probably this big max. And they were like hockey pucks. They were so dense. I thought I was gonna break a tooth on them. Like, I'm gonna be so for real. <laughs> they were not. I was so excited with this recipe that I sent, showed you all because it had dry yeast that it was using, or it had yeast, and I was like, okay, maybe that's what's what happened the last time. I didn't use yeast, I used honey and discard and some flour, and maybe that's what led me astray the first time. So I tried this recipe, and unfortunately, I got the same result, just on a bigger scale. Instead of being this big, it was like this big. And I was really excited, because I love big bagels, but it wasn't that light, good, doughy, bagel that I would expect or that I would want to have for breakfast. I think to make it better, the thing that I could have done was put it in the microwave. I let it sit out on my counter to prove on the sheet itself and also in the mixing bowl when we originally mixed it, um, I let it sit out. It, maybe it wasn't warm enough. Maybe the temperature in my kitchen just wasn't the best to grill the dough. I'm not quite sure. So I think that's the number one thing I would do. I would stick with that recipe because I know that it can make good bagels, I would sub the brown sugar or the sugar bath for the baking soda bath that I did with the pretzels. I think switching those two things could lead to a better bake. I found that the baking soda bath worked 10 times better than either the brown or the regular sugar did. Just in the first video, I used um, brown sugar like it suggested and it turned my dough 
a different color and it sunk like a rock. So then I was like, okay, maybe I'll just try, you know, granulated sugar and it would be better. It didn't change the color of my dough, but it still sunk like a rock. But when I used the baking soda bath from the pretzels video, they floated and they came out perfect and nice chewy. That's what you wanted a bagel. And I just didn't get that with those. And then the bottom one, I hate to say it, but the soda bread, I think I would look again for a different recipe. I'm not saying Paul Hollywood is in the wrong. I'm saying he's very much in the right, just probably in the UK with the specific flour that he requested and the oven temperature. There was two versions that I saw. One of them was the one that I used and the other one had different steps. I don't know how you would best say that of the oven. UK people, if you're watching, please explain to me because <laughs> I'm very, very confused. On the different levels that you set your oven to, it, it was almost like 180 degrees Celsius, I'm making up numbers, C9 with level four. None of my oven says that, it just says numbers and I press big. <laughs> Maybe it's just easier for us or I, maybe y'all's are easier. I'm not quite sure. But one of that the versions of his recipe did have that. And I was like, absolutely not. I'm not going to test fate today with my oven and try to replicate it because I just can't. I don't know what C9 and level four means. I it, It's not an option on my oven. So I think being naive and thinking that I could take a recipe from a different country and apply it to mine without having clear knowledge of what that means or what that entails for my home and my oven. It was just me being naive on my part. So the soda bread was good. It had a good crumb. It had a good flavor. It tasted good with butter. It tasted like Longhorns, like I said in the video. It was really, really good. The only problem is, like I said, I think I just couldn't transfer everything to an American version. And because of that, I fell a little bit short to the recipe. So I don't think it's the recipe itself. I don't think it's the actual bread itself that fell short. I think it was just my lack of knowledge and my inability to transfer because they don't transfer flowers and measurements and temperatures to my world and be able to replicate that. It's just not possible. So finding a different recipe, I think would definitely help as well as um, getting the correct flowers and temperatures down and measurements down but other than that it was so good i wish i had known that going forward but again like i said this is the first time i'm not gonna know everything i'm not gonna know what could have been better what i could have done better during the time that i'm actually baking it it's all you know hindsight is 2020 retrospective thoughts that i'm having now those are the top 10 things i did skip over some things that i made not because they were bad not because they were good just because I didn't think they needed a mention. They were kind of somewhere in the middle. I spoke on them in the videos, but I wanted to highlight these 10, five good, five not so good, to just kind of give you an idea of what my favorite things to bake were, how, how I would change small things, make all 10 of them five-star bakes, and then just to kind of, you know, do a little recap on what we covered this month. I feel like we've, we've done a lot and to see that you all are enjoying it and to have you all here, I can't believe there's so many of you, I'm getting nervous now. But to just know that you're enjoying it as much as I am is such a blessing truly. And I'm so happy that you all are here. I wanna make this a regular thing because I'm very excited for the bakes to come and I just love reflecting. I think it's important to look back on the things that you've done and be proud of your work. So I hope you all have an amazing day and weekend coming up and I will see you all in my next video.